Good morning. If you all could find your seat and uh, take your seat, that would be wonderful. We are going to start. I'm sure you all have uh, the schedule in front of you. We have a very tight uh, package this morning. The very first being the much waited one, uh, Dr. Asriya Veeramaniya getting the award. That's going to be the very first event. So I'm going to um, invite my good friend, Dr. Arasuchalaya, to introduce our um, beloved uh, leader, Dr. Arasu um, Chalaya, to come over and uh, deliver welcome. the in welcome speech and the introduction about uh, the award. Yeah. Welcome address. Welcome address, OK. Sure. <coughs> Good morning. That's really an energetic, energetic uh, response. Very good. Kale Vanakkam. I extend a warm and hearty welcome to all of you for today's uh, uh, events. And I'm sure all of you will agree that yesterday we had a wonderful program, isn't it? And yes. <laughs> Our excellent speeches, panel discussions. Uh, wonderful entertainment, food, and also excellent books to read, souvenirs, and so hopefully today also we're going to have, uh, as already mentioned, a tight program schedule and excellent speeches. And just specific a few things that I can mention as uh, people are coming in. I welcome all. Uh, we are a wonderful journalist in India. Um, Mr. Thirma Veran is going to give a speech today and also participate in panel discussion. And uh, the famous politician, I would say statesman, uh, Dr. Thol Thirma Veran is going to address uh, today uh, here. And uh, of course, the speech that we all are expecting, um, our beloved Asri Raya is going to give a, a speech to us. And while we are here, I can, we met lots of old friends, and also we made some new friends. I made uh, one new friend yesterday, uh, Ranganaya Hiyamma, and uh, we both were born in Thurayur. And so coming back, um, this is the second international conference, which is occurring close to the White House in Washington, D.C. The first one was in, in Germany, and I would say, Periyar is being internationalized, isn't it? <laughs> this is what the poet Bharati Dasan mentioned. Tundu seidu paritta param, tuyadadi marvil viram, mandai churapai, ulagi thoram, manakuheil sirutta yedam, vayadil arivil mudiyar, vaimai porukke yendram, yedayar. So the humanness. People whose rational thought, self-respect, will find themselves young forever and ever. And so this yesterday's speech, I'll just mention one thing and then and conclude uh, my welcome address. Um, yesterday, many issues, global issues, were uh, discussed. Our youngsters were very passionate, referring to the climate change and the students' uh, movement. And also, there were some discussions which mentioned that if we define our goals and if we toil very hard, work very hard at it, there'll be a struggle. That's what uh, Jamie Raskin, our representative, mentioned. And we are bound to succeed. We are bound to succeed. And the more, the harder the struggle, the glorious the victory will be. So we have this great philosopher, Periyar, and Periyar, who thought for the whole world, not for Tamil Nadu, not for India, the whole world. And after him, as president of Dravada Kraham, Mani Mayar uh, was a president, and then Tandai Periyar, after such a glorious and great leader passing away, who is to take the movement forward? Because great movements, including Buddhism, did it faltered. And Periyar himself identified a phenomenal leader for us, and our leader, Veeramani, is leading since Periyar's passing away. 
into many struggles. Yesterday it was mentioned, Mandal Commission, social justice, women equality, in so many uh, aspects. And so we, with his, under his leadership, we can definitely move forward. The struggle is not just Tamil Nadu or India, it is global, and we can definitely do it. And just to conclude, um, if rationalist, humanist, and people with self-respect cannot accomplish these uh, uh, things and, and solve these problems, who else will? As uh, uh, President Barack Obama said, yes, we can. If you cannot, who else can? So I'll just uh, uh, end uh, with a positive note, um, just describing a Tamil uh, words. Where yara alum mudiyadadu, nammal mudiyam. Nammal mudiyadadu, where yara alum mudiyadadu. Yenan. Yenan raal. Naam manidhan eirhil, pagutturiwadihil, suyamariyadik kararhil. Yes, we can. And then ambikyodu, I again welcome all of you for the second day. Enjoy the day. Please give a round, strong applause to all the speakers. Encourage them. Let this be a very good meeting day. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Roy Speckhart, Executive Director of the American Humanist Association. Well, Dr. K. Viramani is the ideological disciple of the great humanist social revolutionary Periyar, founder of the self-respect movement and the famous Dravida Kazagam, or DK. Virmani was born in a middle-class family in Kudalur, South Arcot District, Tamil Nadu. His original name, Sarangapani, highly educated. He obtained his master's degree in economics where he was top of his class and also achieved a Bachelor of Law from Madras University. Viramani entered the limelight at the age of 10 when he was allowed to address the gathering of the Justice Party Conference in 1944. Apart from one year in which he practiced as a lawyer in Kudalur, his career was in social work and activism. He began working with Periyar in 1956, assisting him with editing the rationalist daily of the DK called Vita Thulai, meaning liberation, which he worked his way up to editing himself. In March of 1978, when Periyar's widow and successor, Mani Amai, died, the managing committee of the DK elected Viramani as their general secretary. For the last 40 years, Viramani ran the DK social movement, playing an important role in fashioning the principles of social justice and harmony. And the DK fought for property rights for women, encouraged self-respect marriages, which uh, replaces arranged marriages with loved marriages unconstrained by caste. It sought adoption of two language formula in the state, fought superstition, and heralded rationalism. Today, the DK continues to challenge the rise of governmental reliance on religion, defying governmental ministers' trust in astrology and public participation in temple functions, thereby truly championing the separation of church and state. Not just promoting humanism's rationalism, Viramani also promotes humanism's call for compassion and egalitarianism. He championed the causes of infant and child care, free medical clinics for the poor, education for girls, village development, called Periyar, P-U-R-A, providing urban amenities for rural areas. Additionally, he's among the first in India to open a college exclusively for women. Viramani is an accomplished Tamil scholar and also chancellor of the Periyar Mani Amai University. Viramani continues to be active in social campaigns in support of socially discriminated people and promoting democratic activism. He also participates in running multiple educational institutions for socially underprivileged communities. Not ex afraid to extend himself for others, he was incarcerated more than 40 times for his activities. Viramani's bold statements about the downsides of religious faith even resulted in a petition by, government, by religious conservatives to the governor of Tamil Nadu, signed by over 20,000, calling for the governor not to tolerate what they saw as some kind of act of rascalism, implying that Viramani should be subject to censorship or worse. But just as his activism attracts the ire of those who would oppose progress, he also receives praise for his accomplishments. Respectfully called the lone voice of rationalism, Viramani is the recipient of many honors. 
Alagapa University, conferred a Doctor of Law to him in 2003. Birmani is the Honorary Associate of Rationalist International. Additionally, Periyar International USA gives an annual award for outstanding contributions to social justice named in his honor. Mr. V.P. Singh, former Prime Minister of India, was the first recipient of that award, and yesterday, of course, it was bestowed on Professor Niklas. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to present the American Humanist Association's 2019 Humanist Lifetime Achievement Award, which I have here. It, re <laughs> it reads, for work that embodies humanism and for furthering humanist values in thought, writing, and activism. Thank you so much, Viramani, for all you've taught us, for all you've accomplished. Oh, sure, I'll read it again. It said, reads, for work that embodies humanism and for furthering humanist values in thought, writing, and action. Again, thank you so much for all you've taught us, for all your accomplishments, for your steadfast humanism, and for everything you continue to do for the good. Thank you. Our most respectful Humanist Association Director, my dear respectful Roy Spearhead, and other dignitaries who happen to be one of the co-sponsors of the Periyar International and our friends. Really, when I received the news, I was surprised because as a disciple of Periyar, as a lifelong student of Periyar, and as an humble worker for the great Dravidian movement, the self-respect movement and the self-respect humanism all have combined together. And as a recognition of all those things, they have chosen me. We are in the moment, I am only a humble worker 
I am very much, with all humility, I accept this with great modesty. The only thing is whether I deserve this or not is that it is given not to me personally. It is the recognition of the services of Tandai Periyar, our mentor and leader, to the whole universal community, cutting across all the barriers. If at all, the American Humanist Association have selected me for this award, once again I reiterate that not for my services, but as a student of Periyar, as an worker of Periyar, and for the dedication of this movement, they have chosen me because Periyar is not available now. Only his disciple is available. So, sir, I with bow down my head, I acknowledge this. Normally, we always receive brick bats, not bouquets. This is the first time internationally that we are able to see that Periyar is being recognized for his whole world. And I am very happy through this you have globalized Periyar, which, for which we are striving very hard. That is why I accept this with all modesty and humble. And we have no words to thank you. You are our co-fighter. You are our co-colleague to see a better world of humanism. We are very happy about that. The Periyar International and the American Humanist Association have joined together for this conference. This will be a great turning point in the history of humanism and self-respect. So, on that thing, let me conclude by saying, if you have said I have said, I have done something for this humanity, for this cause of humanism. It is not because of me only. When there is a success, there is no I, only we, that is most important. And that we, I dedicate this to my mentor, Tandai Periyar, this award. <laughs> but for him, I would have been nowhere because I am sitting on the shoulders of great Periyar. That is why I have been seen everywhere. Another thing is, if at all I deserve this one, it was due to my life partner, Mrs. Mohana. <laughs> and I thank her. Because of her, I am what I am today. Our family is a self-respect family, and she takes care of me as well as takes care of the movement by allowing me entirely to do the service for this movement. Hence, I request her to come to the dais. She always shuns public gaze. I know that. Let her come here. Next to that, if at all, this honor must be shared because those who care and share are our party, our movement's colleagues. I request our Vice President of the Dravada Karakam, Kavanyar Kali Pungundran, to come to the dais. Next, I would have the pleasure of inviting, requesting Dr. Chandrasekharan, 
who is the general secretary of the dravida kalaha movement and also the treasurer of our movement mr kumarayan and also i request inba kani who represents our deputy general secretary the women's wing of this great movement which fight for the gender justice <laughs> equally when there is an young group she is an engineer even older generation there is no generation gap in this movement for its continuous struggles that is why a very old person young in our spirits i request madam ranganayake to come to the dais <laughs> ranganayake now i will be failing in my duty of recognition and paying my tributes and also deep debt of gratitude is dr soma ilangovan my brother and also dr lakshman tamil another person of periyar international and our ravi shankar kanabaran who is responsible for the conference of this and all the other friends they are they are our colleagues co-fighters who carry the message of periyar and we are for globalizing periyar's concepts so i it is a recognition i cannot invite you all my family extended family that is a universal family of periyar everywhere in the world that is why i want to share for the with them this joy and happiness on all we all thank the american humanist association for us for this great honor thank you thank you all so the award to uh, asri raya makes <laughs> speak so high of uh, priyar all the way to so many miles away and um, our um, next speaker no needs no introduction that's professor george hart he is a great 
advocacy of uh, Tamil and Tamil classical language. So I invite uh, Dr. Professor Hart to the podium, and he's going to talk for 50, 20 minutes on humanism in classical Tamil. Thank you. Oh, I can just see You're projecting it. Slide. We are projecting the oh, okay. So I don't need this one, maybe. Uh, if it's, uh, it's not a Mac, so it's not going to come as well. But that's okay. I have to read this. You can use. Okay, uh, right and left. Okay, got it. Lorna, yeah. come. Uh, before I talk about <coughs> old Tamil literature, I just wanted to say one thing because I keep hearing uh, things that I I think we somebody needs to say something about about a very important issue. If I were to talk to everyone in this room, I wouldn't find many things every single person would agree on. But I think without any doubt, I can say that everyone here will accept the fact that caste is toxic and that the world and India and Tamil Nadu would be much better off if caste would simply disappear. Uh, the problem is that everyone uh, it's, it's very common for everyone to think caste simply was imposed by the uh, Sans or Indo-Aryan speaking people from the north and by the Brahminical system. Um, and actually, I think it's important to realize that caste, that's one element in caste, but caste is a much, much more complex phenomenon than most of us realize. It's not simply Manu who wrote a bunch of laws and everybody decided to start having castes. That doesn't make any kind of logical sense. Rather, I think caste, that is jati, kudi, is something which is very ancient and which came to be a feature of Indian villages. It kept the social system extremely stable and unchanging. It probably in many ways did not change for at least 2,000 and perhaps 3,000 years in many respects. So I think it's important to understand that when we talk about caste, it's not like racism in the West, which racism is simply binary. Uh, you, you have one kind of people and another kind of people in those two groups have had a history of conflict and of one group exploiting the other. Caste is thousands of groups and each one is in many ways independent. Uh, it is, there's a story in the West about a, the Gordian knot Uh, the Gordian knot was a knot which was on the yoke of a chariot um, someplace in Asia Minor, and no one could untie it. And it became legendary, no one could un untie it. Finally, Alexander the Great showed up, 
and he tried to untie it, and he couldn't untie it. And so he took out his sword, and he simply cut it, and it fell away. And here's the picture of Alexander the Great cutting the Gordian knot. Caste is like this. There has to be somewhere a sword that will cut this terribly complex Gordian knot. Um, now, the sword, I don't think we can take it literally. I don't think violence will work. The only thing that will work to eliminate caste is rationality and a humanistic view of things. Uh, somehow this must spread among the population of India. I don't know how that's going to work. It may be many generations, but someday that will happen and this horrible institution which is so ancient and causes so much loss will disappear.